Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and the first video in a new series where I'm taking a slightly deeper dive into some of the things that APT can give you. Today I'm starting with APT simulation mode and that's simply because a lot of the videos I'll be doing in the future I will be using it. Uh, I'd rather use it in simulation mode where I can do this during the day or during bad weather uh, rather than wasting my precious imaging time too much. Of course there are areas where I'll need to be set up and to show you properly what's going on but for things like session craft or advanced plans and everything else I can do that in the simulation without any problem. Now I'm only going to make two assumptions in this video and that's one you have PhD2 installed already and that you have ASTAP installed or some other plate solving software. The user guide mentions ASTAP, uh, that's simply because the simulation mode is pre-configured to work with that as long as it's installed in the default location, but it does work with other ones once you set them up properly. So to get into this we'll start off with the Sky Simulator and see how we get that up and running. Now as usual the link to download the Sky Simulator is in the description. Simply follow the link, click on the green download button and get the latest version. At the time of this recording that's version 2.0.2c uh, which was released in early November. So once you've downloaded it simply browse to wherever you have it located and double click on the file. And that will launch the install. Uh, I suggest the default location makes it easiest and install. Fairly quick install. Just a thing with the simulator, you can run it with some of your gear, you connect your own mount or your own focus or whatever if you need to test things out instead of using the default ones. Uh, I don't need to view any of the text files but I am going to launch it for now. So just click finish to launch and this is what you get. Now I'm not going to actually run it at the moment but I am going to configure it to work as if it's some of my gear. I'm going to set it up to match my telescope focal length and size and the camera I'm using which is a uh, ASI 294mm. So for that the pixel size um, I run this in bin 2 mode so I get a, a pixel of 4144 for the width. Next you want to click on this little calculator here uh, and this sets everything right up. So my focal length I use is 560 um, that's my generally what I use. Pixel size for this in bin 2 is 4.63. Click on OK. And the image height for the mine is 2. Point, oh, so what are my points? 2822 pixels in height. So OK. And that just changes some of the uh, settings it needs. Now I'm not going to actually run this right now, you don't need to, but I will be coming back to it uh, and starting it once I have um, APT connected. So for now I'm just going to stop this, we're going over now to set up uh, PHD2 as a uh, simulation. So let's go over to that. So I'm just going to minimise this down out of the way uh, and then launch PHD2. Now what you need to do is create a totally new profile. So go to connect, manage profiles, new using wizard. For the guide camera go right to the bottom select simulator. Yeah, you can click yes it'll just tell you it can't get the pixel size but you can set this up as if it is your real one. So 3.75 uh, the guide focal length I'll use my 150 mm uh, Orion Mini so 162 is the focal length on that and next now the auxiliary mount you need to set this up and it needs to match the one in the simulator and what you'll be using in APT which is telescope simulator for dot net so click on that uh, you click yes on this one it will get the information in, in here that it needs uh, I don't have adaptive optics so no need to worry about that uh, a rotator you only need to enter a rotator in your guiding if you're using off-axis guiding so and a rotator so next on that name the profile so I'll just call this sim mode uh, build a dark library you have to do that and I'll hit auto restore calibration and finish and then it'll want to create its dark library I'm going to create a small one and start 
Now, an important thing with PhD2 is once you've finished using it in simulation mode, be sure to go back into it and reset it to your normal uh, profile. Otherwise, it'll want to start this one next time. And it becomes really important now because the newer versions, uh, the preview versions of APT that have come out for those with the key, um, actually support launching APT, uh, launching PhD2 from within APT. So if you do that, you may not even know you've got the simulation running. So, and it won't help your imaging, I believe me. So, Dark Live is built. Okay. And you see that's all set up and running. I'll show you a little later to make sure it's working right. And but that's all we need to do. So that's PhD2 done. And next we'll move into configuring APT. Okay, so I'll just get rid of uh, PhD2 here. And simply double click on the simulation profile. And away it goes. Uh, you'll hear it connecting to various bits and pieces. And this is what you get the first time you start it, a nice bright white screen. Uh, for those of you who have purchased a key, 4.32 is available for you. I'm going to ignore it for now because I'll be installing it later. Get rid of focus craft for now. And the first thing I'm going to do, the very first thing, is go into APT settings. Make it so the next time I start this it's not a bright, bright, bright white. And make it grey. Uh, Setting your location could be a good idea here. Um, Southern Hemisphere. I'm just, I'll just change the default one here to uh, not home. Because that's what I'll be using in here. I'm minus 36 or thereabouts. And 150 east. Elevation's about 25. Time zone is plus 10. And I like a twofset twilight of about 20. Now I like to es uh, export both my time and coordinates and show location. While you're in here you might want to make sure your scope and focus are set to auto connect along with the filter wheel if you use one. Um, planetarium if you use one. Um, I use Stellarium. Even if it's not running it doesn't really matter because it won't actually do anything. It'll just give you error messages telling you it can't connect. So click on OK there. Now the next part you might want to do is set up down here in your object calculator uh, to match your, your scope. I've said before 560 and scope diameter is actually 102. That's fine there. Uh, next I'm actually going to disconnect the camera because I don't think I can get into settings through there. Yes. And then hold down shift and click connect. And here I get to choose the camera. You want the ASCOM one for this and click OK. And mine's doing, I don't know what's going on lately, but mine's been hiding my uh, screens underneath. I don't know why. Uh, for the camera, you want to select Sky Simulator. Then go into Properties, and you want to set this up to match your gear as well. So I set this up 4.63, 4.63 there. Now you can set it up so it actually works a little bit better. Um, I'm going to have my sky glow is not going to be so bad. I'll set that up at 2. And the read noise I'm going to set up at 1.5. Just because you know, I'm only testing, I don't need to. Um, in the install guide for this on the website for the simulator, it does tell you you need to go through and select your image. Um, it's installed by default into your documents directory and it's already set up to use that anyway so you don't really need to. Um, allow gain settings, turn that on so you can set the game for it which would be good and just click OK and then OK to reconnect the camera. So the camera is done. Uh, as you can see it's readjusted my settings here to be the right size hit a recalc, you'll get all my details down the bottom here so that's all good there next one is going to your gear tab um, settings I don't know if this will work or not I don't know if it's hiding it either no it's not so it doesn't work so disconnect the scope shift connect of 
course, you want the same one again, the teleca telescope simulator.net. Now, in the properties for that, oh, okay. That's okay. Oh, it wasn't the telescope I wanted to work with anyway. Don't worry, my brain's gone there. Okay. That's what I get for doing this at 2.30 in the morning. I don't have a rotator, so I don't need to worry about that, but I do have the filter wheel connected. Um, so connect your filter wheel. Go to settings. Now what you need to do here is, this one, I've played with it before, so it's set up at setting, but generally this comes up as a default of uh, four slots but apt set up to use seven so it's changed that to seven and clicks okay that's so that you can work with the uh, lrgb and the sho filters otherwise you can only use the l and sho because rgb is on on five six seven so your wheel will play up if you get to that point um now the other thing you may want to set while you're in here is if you're planning on using this to try meridian flips and test things like that, your meridian flip settings, you might want to go into session craft um, and in the settings there, change the flip movement duration to one second. Uh, because this is only a simul simulated mount, it doesn't take it very long to move. You leave it at 15 seconds, your flip will fail. I can tell you that one now. So I'm just leaving that at that at the moment. I'm not going to set that up. Next, go back to your gear tab and into point craft. And here you can go to into the settings. As you can see, it's got some set up by default. Um, plate solve 2 isn't there. So I'm going to change that to where it is for me. I've got it installed there. Okay. Plate solve 3 I have installed in the same sort of place. Click OK. And uh, all sky plate solvers in the right place. Uh, then you can pick which one you like. Um, I go near solving. Uh, because this is a simulator, you can go a lot slower. I recommend a few seconds anyway, but you can go definitely much lower. And, uh, oh, sorry, default game. It's about a 100. These settings don't make a big difference. Um, I suggest setting the exposures longer, but they don't make a big difference difference to the actual image you see on your screen so click OK and that's it done for um, I'll just watch the other one yeah, near solving OK so that's done for that now technically I should be able to go anywhere and make anything work so what I'm going to do is for go to I need to get uh, oh before I do anything like that what I might actually do is quit out of APT for now so that's done and I might actually start the simulator running so start the simulator so it gets all the simulators going and restart simulation mode oh get that going again so, so now I should be able to do oh pardon me I'm getting tired uh, so now I should be able to get it all running so the first thing I'm going to do is go to my gear as you see, everything is connected now properly. I should be able to go to my RGB filters. Yes, that's fine. Uh, go back to L for now. And in my scope, I'm going to shift click on go to. And I'm going to move to the uh, equator. And that'll take a few seconds here. And once that's done, APT is going to connect, connect to PhD2 and it will start automatically doing the um, calibration for PhD2 which I haven't done yet so away that goes while it's doing this um, under camera settings in here have I changed them no, I haven't. So you increase the number of stars. I take it up to about 30. Uh, reduce the hot pixels down to about half. And the noise, I reduce that by about half. So there. Um, you can improve your seeing. There are other settings you do. 
Uh, if you haven't got the camera actually connected, you can do this, or not running, I should say, you can do this even more in there. Uh, you can set how much cloud you've got and everything, so you can really simulate the uh, atmosphere and everything else. You'll see I've got a better image. Oh. <laughs> I've just killed the calibration. Thank you very much. So I'll stop that. But while I'm there, stop like that. Uh, camera settings. As you see, there's all different ones you can set even more. Um, you can reset it. So what I'm going to have to do now is start that, start that and redo the calibration sorry about that so once the calibration's finished i'll just show you that plate solving and everything's working in the other one and away we go i'm real sorry about this i didn't mean to uh, so while that's doing that uh, nip back into apt um i don't know if i looked at the guide settings oh yeah we need to change these um dithering distance i'll set that down to about three um everything else is right here change that to arc seconds you get much better details i'll set that to four and that's it so okay for that and now we just wait uh, so calibration starting it must be almost finished yeah, here it comes back and it will start guiding in a moment so what I'm going to do now is while I'm waiting for that I'm going to pick an object something that's above the horizon for me uh, what have we got We'll go for Orion. Now, PHT2 guiding has started, which is good. I'll make sure that's running properly. And there it goes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that. Just to show you everything's working. And I'm going to want to go into point craft. Okay, escape position. Um, I'm just going to run this on auto. Oh, it's imaging on auto. Now, if I've set everything up right, it should plate solve without an issue. Solving. Bingo, one second. Uh, objects. Okay. Go to plus plus. Sorry, this is taking a bit longer than I thought. I shouldn't be doing it this time of the morning, but it's the only time I can really do these when it's quiet. And there we go. Solving 624 pixels. Woohoo! Well, that's what I need to change. I need to change the number of times it can try. I mean, it generally does it in two, but just in case it doesn't <laughs> there you go two pixels um, I'm just going to go in the settings I'm going to change that to five um, and I'll make this a bit tighter it's a pretty good mount this uh, this one okay and that's it so as you see it plate solves and everything else it moves your mount round um, so it's all set up for testing later on so that's all I need to do and I think that'll finish this one for now just make sure you get everything set up and it matches in everything you're doing um, it is now 2.37 in the morning here I think I'll call this one quits uh, thank you everyone if you've stayed this long and clear skies and I'll talk to you next time take care all